my name is Marley and welcome to this video. It is currently September 28th, which means that it is my 24th birthday, which means that I am a Libra. And because of that, I wanted to do a reading vlog this week where I read books that were recommended to Libras. Hopefully when I'm uploading this, it is still Libra season, but I thought this was a fun way to celebrate my birthday and Libra season. So I watched a whole bunch of videos that recommended books for each sign, which is a pretty popular thing to do on YouTube. So I was able to watch a lot of videos and I compiled a list and I chose three books from that list to read this week and I will be taking you through my week with me and letting you know my thoughts on the books. So let me just tell you which books I chose. The first recommendation I got from a YouTuber called Marin Altman and the book that she recommended for Libras is The Picture of Dorian Gray which is a classic book that I have never read before. I've always heard about you know Dorian Gray. I know that there's a movie out but I've never read the book so I was really excited when I saw this recommended for Libras. The reason reason that she said it was good for Libras is because it deals with themes of equality and self-reflection and justice for all and relationship dynamics and she said it also has a very aesthetically pleasing writing style so that's why she thinks it's good for Libras. The second book that I chose is Eliza and Her Monsters which was recommended by lovely like Laura on YouTube which I'll link all of their videos below in the description of course and she recommended this book for Libras because she said the main character Eliza reminded her a lot of a Libra because she was very gentle and kind and yeah she just thought that Libras would relate to that character. The third and final book I'm going to attempt to read this week is called Sweet Bitter and I found this book recommended on the channel called Book Break and they said that this would be good for Libras because Libras love the drama but they don't like the drama to be too serious. They prefer for it to be more fun and they also said that Libras tend to be very elegant and this book is a very like elegant book. So those are the three books I'm going to be reading this week and I'll be letting you know my thoughts on those as I go. to do a little update on my reading so far this week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little montage of building my bookshelf that I got for my birthday. Definitely check out my what I got for my birthday video which should be up on my channel now. It's like a bunch of like bookish related things that I got this year. Wonder why. But anyways, so I started two of the three books that I plan to read this week. The first one being The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I actually decided to start listening to the audiobook for this book because I have a lot of stuff going on this week and I really just needed to multitask. So I was listening to that audiobook during work afternoon and if you guys don't know the picture of Dorian Gray is like a classic novel that is about the man named Dorian Gray who gets a portrait painted of him and then he becomes immortal and stops aging but the painting ages and that's all I really know about this so the first couple chapters I'm gonna say was pretty boring <laughs> which you could sort of anticipate with this being as I said an older book and I don't know if I made the right decision listening to audiobook because I think it's also hindering my comprehension of the story but so far we've basically just seen the artist making the portrait of Dorian and there were some conversations about how Dorian really wished that he didn't have to age and he could stay young just like his painting and he was actually kind of upset that there was a painting of him looking so so beautiful because he was not gonna stay like that forever so we're seeing the type of person Dorian is and a lot of the characters are actually like very like superficial and obsessed with youth obviously that's gonna be a major theme the next book that I started I don't know if you can see that well is Eliza and her monsters by Francesca Zappia this is a super popular book it's a bit old now but basically it's about this high schooler named Eliza and she has this like comic graphic novel website 
I don't know how to describe it, but she creates a story and posts it online, basically. And she draws, like, monsters and draws characters to create this story that is, like, based off of constellations and stuff. It's kind of cool. It's actually very impressive for Eliza's character that she, like, came up with this world. And it has, like, over 2 million followers and it has a huge fandom. It's a huge thing online. But in her real life, she's someone who, you know, doesn't have very many real life friends. She just has her online friends and the fandom and she really struggles socially, right? Until this boy comes to her school and he ends up being a fan of her work and he writes fan fiction actually for her story, but she doesn't tell him that she's the author. She just acts like she is a fan also of, what is the series called? I'm forgetting what the series is called. Oh, Monstrous Sea. I think. Anyways, so she likes him. They're gonna have a little romance, but, and how far am I? I'm like 43%, so basically halfway, and it's just so frustrating because she's not telling him that she is the author of Monstrous Sea, and it's just like such a big lie, and I hate that in stories. That's probably one of the tropes I hate the most is like miscommunication and like just lying about something that you literally don't need to lie about. So obviously like they're gonna fall more in love and then he's gonna find out she's the author and has been lying to him and that's gonna be like the big cause of tension but anyways i am really liking this one obviously i read a lot of it tonight and i am relating to eliza a lot especially my high school self matches her high school self a lot with just being so like not interested in school and socializing being very like timid and just wanting to be online and involved in all of the fandom stuff so i definitely relate to this dorian gray not as big of a fan of hey guys it's me bringing you a new update on thursday yesterday I did not update for a couple reasons. One, my work is pretty busy this week. Two, I'm taking some online courses, like continuing education courses, and I've been working on some like homework for that. And then three, I went on a walk to get groceries and I got rained on on my way back and it put me in like a really bad mood. Because obviously that's not fun to get rained on when I'm carrying my groceries. But anyways, we have reading updates. So I've continued to listen to the Dorian Gray audiobook during work and also during when I've been like cleaning and organizing my room and like setting up my bookshelf, which I'm still working on. It's a slow process, figuring out what I'm gonna put. Maybe you guys can see some other shelves. Yeah, you get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm basically just feeling very busy this week. But anyways, so it's actually been nice to listen to an audiobook so I can like multitask. Still not loving it. I see why people recommended it for a Libra and how it does have aesthetically pleasing, beautiful writing for sure. But is it very interesting? No. And I think that is what I would prefer in a book over like aesthetically pleasing writing. But yeah, Dorian Gray, we're seeing him be kind of a jerk. And a lot of the characters are just very unlikable. They are all very like materialistic and superficial, which is the point of the book but it's not super fun to read about characters that you dislike. We're also seeing more of the photo, like Dorian noticed that the photo seemed to age or get, he just looked like meaner after Dorian had just done something mean to the woman that he claimed to love. So Dorian actually is having some like self-reflection and being like, oh, maybe the painting turned evil looking because I just did something bad, so he's gonna try and be better. So that is interesting, but I feel like, yeah, I'm only halfway through the book and he's gonna stop caring about that and he's just gonna turn like a full-on villain oh also that girl got murdered which i forgot about i think i knew that that there was some like murder in this and i've forgotten so it might get more interesting second half we'll see then we have eliza and her monsters loving this book i'm very close to finishing i'm at 85 percent and it has such beautiful moments specifically with eliza and her twin brothers throughout most of the book she feels like they hate her they just have very different interests in her like they're very sporty and she obviously as i said was more like introverted and just likes to draw on her computer and then what i uh, predicted would happen happened where her identity got out she kept the fact that she was the author of this 
webcomic a secret and anyways I guess it's a spoiler alert, but you can probably figure that it would get come out and her brothers is just like defending her, especially to her parents who do not understand. The parents are very annoying, <laughs> especially reading from Eliza's point of view. Like you can understand them to a certain extent because you're like, okay, they don't know what, it's like growing up with technology and the internet and all that, but it's also like so annoying when they're like constantly taking her phone and telling her to get off the computer. And it's like, she's literally creating a huge epic web comic for millions of people and like making big bucks doing it it's actually crazy to think about like a teenager doing that i think i said that before and then the romance was very cute until recently now i'm not really liking her love interest as much i'm kind of pissed at something he's just not being super like supportive of what she's going through with her identity coming out and so i'm not really loving that this book is also really cool because you do get little images throughout the book of Eliza's like artwork so that's cool it's kind of like fangirl where like you get like little snippets of like her fan fiction throughout it's same with like Eliza's story also webcomic is the term I was looking for before when I was explaining <laughs> what she does online sorry about that I definitely relate to Eliza a lot which is what the person who recommended the book said from why she recommended to Libra so that is good that is correct <laughs> Anyways, I'll definitely finish Eliza tonight and the audiobook for Dorian Gray, I'll probably just have to continue for the rest of the week. <laughs> Guys, I just realized this assignment that I thought I had due tomorrow for my like continuing education course I was talking about is actually due Sunday. Like, why am I confusing the days so much? I was convinced October 4th was Friday. So anyways, I do not have to rush so much with this assignment. Like, I have, I have the whole weekend to finish it. <laughs> so now I can really make sure I focus on my reading tonight. I, like, can't keep the days straight. I really can't. Quarantine life, I guess. <laughs> Friday. Oh my gosh, thank god. So I uploaded my what I got for my birthday video So go check that out, but I realized I forgot to mention my new Kobo e-reader <laughs> Like the major part of my gift. So I got the Kobo Nia and I just thought I would show it to you guys It's super mini like give you like an idea of how big it is. It's like my head. I also got a cover so shout out to my mom for getting me this sorry i forgot this i'm so dumb last night i finished eliza and her monsters which as you guys know from my previous updates i absolutely love i gave it five out of five stars maybe it didn't quite deserve five out of five i don't care i loved it so much as i said i related to eliza so much i fell for her character throughout the only thing was getting annoyed with her and the lie of her identity but as you'll see like it was a really big deal when her identity comes out but I just wish that she would have told Wallace her boyfriend but that's the only thing otherwise I loved Eliza and I just thought the whole story was just beautiful and really unique and yeah, it really touched me probably definitely one of my favorites of the year so the person i'm forgetting now who it was the person that recommended this book for libras i would say is correct or at least this libra really liked it <laughs> and then of course we have dorian gray the picture of dorian gray i have like two hours left of the audiobook out of out of nine so i'm so close i'm definitely gonna like get through that during work today and so then i'll have finished two of the books dorian gray is still mixed for me like some chapters i'm really comprehending everything i'm understanding what's going on it's interesting and some chapters i just don't know what's going on it's it gets like too wordy it's, it's a lot of like telling instead of showing like just catching us up on what's happened instead of like showing us what's happened so i'm definitely gonna be relieved when that is done also, since I finished organizing my bookshelf last night, I thought I'd give you like a little bookshelf tour with the disclaimer that these are not all my books. They're just like my most recent purchases that I have at this apartment. My mom has like all my books at her house. Anyways, so let's start with the top. We have a rose. Then we have my fantasy books, mostly like 
Rick Riordan books, Rainbow, Rowell, Midnight Sun, yeah. Then we have a card that my boyfriend got me for our anniversary, a wobbly uh, flask. And then we just have this other, um, the Beatrice Letters book that I just actually found last minute last night. Then on the second shelf, we have all of my uh, paperback books. I have not read these yet, the Truly Devious series, and have not read the Taylor Jenkins Reads books. But, oh, and I haven't read these either. But yeah, all the rest. And then we have my tarot cards. Go check out my tarot videos that I've done on the channel. And then all of my perfumes. And then I just added this. I don't know if you can see it. It's like a little skull. This is just like for Halloween. That's the only Halloween decorations I have. The next one is my Cassandra Clare collection. As you can see, it's only her newest releases. As I said, this is my seeker. We have a little bookmark collection, a photo album my friends got me, and then my candle. And the last shelf, we have my hardcover contemporary books, and then my journals and like some notebooks and yeah i have what is it three full journals of my life and then i'm working on this one and then just like some random little things another flask and then these are my drawers which you don't really need to see in but yeah that's <laughs> there's a bookshelf tour for you so i just went to the dentist it's been the first time i went in a couple of years don't recommend that it literally was so painful they only got through half of my mouth i have to go back to have the rest of it cleaned and i have two cavities so psa go to the dentist every year yeah so i'm upset about that is this a reading vlog or is this an artsy vlog who knows it's sunday and i finished the picture of dorian gray yesterday so i thought i'd let you know i've sort of struggled to figure out what my thoughts are on this book like i definitely see why it's a classic i really have always liked the premise of a guy who doesn't age but a portrait of him does and all of his sins are reflected on the portrait and he just keeps looking perfect and being seemingly perfect i guess that would be a lot of like social commentary on how people just really like idolize youth and maybe think lower of like older people or uglier people and just how like superficial people can be so i appreciate like all of those themes and so probably a great read for like an english class for you to like dissect however as i've said multiple times in this video the old style writing like it was written in the 1800s just wasn't super gripping for me so overall i think i gave it like a two stars just because 
reasons. My personal enjoyment from reading was not very high and it could just be like so wordy, so much talking, especially from, I think his name was Henry, Mr. Henry or whatever, but I am excited to watch the movie. I don't know if I'll watch it and talk about it in this vlog or anything, but I would definitely be interested to see how other people like interpret the story and then show it in more of like an entertaining way. Yes, yeah, so I'll update you later today day or tomorrow when hopefully I have finished Sweet Bitter. So I just reached 30% of Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler, I think it is. And I'm actually really enjoying it. I don't think I said what it was about. About yet so basically it's about this 22 year old girl who decides to move to New York City not really for any real reason except just to, like get out of her small town and really just start her life like she's not an actress singer or anything like that I think she just had like a degree in English or something and she starts working at this restaurant I think it's like the most high-end like best restaurant in New York City and it's really just about her learning about the restaurant industry and how to be a good waitress which maybe wouldn't sound that interesting but I have worked as a like in the service industry before so I think that's what makes it more interesting for me and I'm able to relate to it a bit like obviously relate to serving people and you know dealing with like a kitchen and like other servers and bartenders and stuff like that and it's also sort of relatable for me because I am you know a small town girl that moved to a bigger city and that's where I live now so I can definitely relate to that and then having to adjust to like living in a big city getting used to taking you know the subway which she does and just having to you know figure things out figure out a way to make money so you can pay your rent and all that and I also did have a chance like I did get a job at a pretty fancy high-end restaurant here in Toronto I ended up not taking it but I did do like an observation shift so I sort of saw what it would have been like to work there and that definitely seems like the type of restaurant that she's working at so I don't know I just find it interesting and I guess relatable in a way although I didn't take that job because I didn't want to memorize the menu and all of the like fancy menu items and learn all of like the fancy high-end dining rules and all that stuff which is what she's having to do so I can't fully relate to that but I find it interesting this is probably not a book for everyone because there's a lot of details about like the restaurant industry and serving and food and learning about wines because you really have to know all that stuff as a server at a high-end restaurant it's a lot so yeah but I am enjoying it and it's just what they said about having you know kind of fun drama and I guess elegance that's what I said in the beginning about why it was recommended for Libras and yeah this Libra is liking it Hello, so here we are. I officially finished Sweet Bitter last night. So let's talk about it. I stand by what I said about the first 30%. I was definitely enjoying it at that point. My opinions definitely went down as I continued. For one thing, the romance. There was definitely a hint of the romance in the beginning and it definitely had potential to be cute. However, it ended up being terrible <laughs> we honestly barely got any scenes that actually made you want to like root for the couple by the end you really weren't rooting for them i feel like i grew to dislike a lot of the characters that i initially liked including our main character this definitely isn't a story of like a hero having like character development it's more of like her having character regression and like getting corrupted by the service industry in New York City and I guess just the life in New York City like she gets very into drinking partying doing drugs after her shifts at the restaurant she becomes honestly just a mess it was very sad like I definitely felt for her especially because you see and this isn't an ex this isn't even explored very much but you know that her mom was absent although you don't even really know if she died or if she just abandoned her but she grew up without a mom and with some daddy issues as well so i definitely feel bad for her and see why I got into this sort of lifestyle but she still becomes pretty unlikable at 
points or it's just kind of like disappointing where her life ends up going <laughs> even the ending was not really happy also another thing i didn't even know the main character's name until halfway through the book and i didn't even think about it but all of a sudden they say tess and i'm like who is tess and it's the main character and i didn't even know that that was her name so unless that was done on purpose by the author i think that that's kind of bad <laughs> to not even know the main character's name until halfway through and then I got like confused. But I do stand by how I thought it was interesting reading about the service industry and being so focused on that because I have not read any books like it. I would actually be interested in seeing a movie that was like this as well, but I just found a lot of things to be like upsetting and not enjoyable as enjoyable as I went. So I ended up giving it three out of five stars. So that means I completed all three books that were recommended for Libras this week. I would say my top was definitely Eliza and Her Monsters with five out of five stars, then Sweet Bitter at three out of five and then Dorian Gray at two out of five. I would say there actually were some similarities between the picture of Dorian Gray and Sweet Bitter because they both sort of deal with our main character getting corrupted by like the people around them and the society that they're in I guess and by the end you honestly don't really like main characters that much so I guess that was a similar theme and did I like those themes? I would say yes, I just wasn't totally in love with the execution. So yeah, would I read more books that are recommended for Libras? Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe I would just stick to whatever I feel like reading because it was sort of a hit or miss challenge. So I'll just wrap up the video now. Thank you guys for watching. If you did, let me know your thoughts on this challenge and my week. Yeah, I hope you'll subscribe for more reading vlogs because these are, I think, my favorite thing to film now. It's nice to like film sporadically throughout the week instead of just sitting down for like half an hour and filming like a sit down video. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great week and see you in my next video.